Cy Quantum, that uh, that company, mm -hmm. some Australian founders, yeah. but it's a US-based company mm -hmm. now. Coalitions criticised you, saying it's not made in Australia, this is a US company, and then you've had others in the industry uh, questioning the rigour around the process choosing this company. Can what I do you say to those? Okay, so there's two things you've raised. One is um, you've got people like Jeremy O'Brien and Terry Rudolph who founded Cy Quantum in 2015. They left our shores because, as is often the case, we've got Australians with great ideas that don't get the backing and it's other countries that recognise their value before us and get the commercial head start. Uh, these two said we want to come back to Australia. We want to put Australia on the map uh, and deliver um, a, one of the world's first fault-tolerant quantum computers. Huge. So we want to bring Australians back to build a stronger economy, one. And they came out of uni of Queensland. So some of the people who've criticised it who've been Queensland MPs, it's just staggering that they don't back Queenslanders who want to help the So they're, bringing, they're going to bring the company back, is that right? They're, they're going to start... They're, they're going to set up their uh, Asia-Pacific headquarters here. They've got their headquarters there. They're not going to shut it down and kill off jobs in that space. They're going to open up, expand and create jobs here and work with the local ecosystem to be able to build stronger quantum sector that most countries get will drive future economic growth and productivity. Some in the on industry, the second point, yeah, the rigour yeah, around that. Yeah. So on that rigour point, um, we, we've been, uh, you know, I first met with this company back in October of 22. We have gone through since then, we announced this in May of 24, right? We have gone through a rigorous process of market testing, then subjecting that to technical analysis, um, backing it in with legal and commercial advice to structure a deal that's good for taxpayers, good for the economy and allows the company to be able to grow and also with commitments to the local economy as well. It's not just um, investing in them and saying that's that. They've got to work with the local community and economy as well. It's been through that rigorous process. The local companies are complaining. Some of them are saying they've been dudded. No, because we went, so? we went through uh, expression of interest. We went through market testing over 20 companies asking effectively two things. How close are you built to building a fault-tolerant quantum computer and how can what are the spillover effects? That is, um, what benefits can you provide more broadly for the economy? And then subjected that to testing. Now, what we've done is no different to what the Liberals did when they backed silicon quantum computing out of Union of New South Wales and Michelle Simmons. They put that money in there. We, we've done this, made this investment now, and the National Reconstruction Fund will support future investments in this space in the years ahead. Fatima Payman has copped flack for her comments where she used the chant from the river to the sea. The Senate rejected the language. Should the Prime Minister remove her from her duties on the Foreign Affairs and Trade Committee? The Prime Minister ultimately makes those decisions, right? And uh, it's not for me to give him advice on your program about what he should do. What I would say about Fatima is this. Um, people will uh, have their, their views, strong views, about what she should or shouldn't have said. Um, what's gone missing in this is that you've got... Particularly, it takes a lot of guts to go out on an issue as tough as this as a first-term Member of Parliament and to try and get people to focus on the moral issue at hand, which is the role of silence when, from her perspective, as she said, um, you've seen 35,000 people killed, they're being starved, and we're seeing what's happening in Rafa which the international community has urged Israel not to do. And so uh, she's focused our attention on that. I don't use that chant. I don't believe that chant is right when Israelis use it or Palestinians use it because it's designed to limit our ability to get to a two-state solution. Um, Fatima chose to, to use that. I wouldn't have done it and I don't think she should have. But what I do back is Fatima's right to express her concern and the concern of others in the community that we are overlooking the fact so many people have been affected by what's happening in Gaza. Do you uh, agree with her that it's, Do you agree with her assessment that it's genocide? Well, so here's the thing. Uh, you know, I come from a... My, my parents are Bosnian, right? We saw what happened in the 90s in the conflict in the Balkans and ultimately the International Court of Justice made a call about... Um, genocide uh, and there's been in some of the ICJ's determinations so far when they make that call they've said there's plausible grounds to believe that that's happening but I'll leave that to the ICJ 
to make. I will... So you, I you will think there's not, a question mark over just, that? Just, well, I just want to make this point. Like Fatima, um, there are a number of us that will not stop speaking uh, on the issue about the, the way in which 35,000 um, Palestinians have been killed by the Israeli government's actions uh, over the course of this campaign in Gaza, and uh, we cannot remain silent on that. Uh, and... Yeah, as much as the coalition wants to focus on slogans, they have never expressed a view seriously about whether or not they believe that the Israeli government's conduct and their observance of international humanitarian law has been proper. I don't think, I believe, as I've expressed on Sky, that there's been a systemic failure on this by the Israeli government to observe international humanitarian law. So many journalists have been killed and targeted. You think there's so a, many you think there's a question mark over the have been genocide? Killed. The genocide question. Qu question mark. Because you're saying get, it's the ICJ that needs to th decide. These that. these matters get resolved by the ICJ. That that's. I think it's important that we respect that. I, I am saying to you, respect. We should see Israel respect, respect international humanitarian law, and we have a dedicated body that looks at these things about making a decision on genocide. I want them to do their work, but I also want us to recognise we're at a moment in time where one of the biggest human catastrophes occurring and we cannot remain silent on it. Penny Wong said it's hate speech from the river to the sea. Should Senator Payman apologise? Uh, well, I, uh, as I said to you, I don't use that chant um, and I think we've got to a situation where people have expressed their views about what Fatima has said. Uh, I just... I understand the huge burden that has been that you can clearly tell um, Fatima is dealing with, as she said, in terms of it's a, a very much a conscience uh, issue. I do get that, uh, in particular, uh, my friends in the Jewish community uh, do not like that chant for understandable reason, uh, and it's why I don't want Israelis to use uh, that saying from their point of view or Palestinians. We've got to get beyond the slogans, get to the heart of what's happening here, the longer-term prospect for peace comes out of a two-state solution in that part of the world.